The stack panel, wrap panel, and dock panel are simple containers you'll use when you create user interfaces. You can use them by themselves. So in other words, you'll have a window or a page that has just a stack panel or just a dock panel. But typically, you'll combine them and use them together to control your layout. So for example, you'd have two stack panels inside a dock panel to create a common dialog box. What do I mean by this? Let's go see. On the left, you can see a dialog I wanted to create. I want to display a name and an email, and then I want buttons so that the users can scroll forwards and backwards among customers or contacts or whatever is in there. And then I also wanted an OK button. And I want the previous and next buttons to be on the left and the OK button to be on the right. And I basically want them to stay there. And then I want the text boxes to stay at the top of the window. So my outer element is a dock panel. And then inside, I have three stack panels. The first stack panel contains the two text blocks and the two text boxes. And that's docked to the top. The second stack panel contains the previous and next buttons. And I've docked it to the left, and I've set its orientation to horizontal. So the buttons will be laid out from left to right. I set their minimum width to 50. So because they're a particular width, and they're docked to the left, those buttons are not going to resize. They're going to stay on the left-hand side of the window. The next stack panel contains the OK button. It's docked on the right. And that button's minimum width is set to 50 as well. So that button is going to stay on the right. Now, if I just had an OK button, I don't necessarily need a stack panel. I could have docked the button on the right. But I built in some additional flexibility, because maybe I want to add a cancel button at some point. And what I also did for the three buttons is I set their vertical alignment to top, so they're always going to stay essentially in the same position relative to the email text box. So let's run this. And let's get the first nesting example. So you can see that the previous and next buttons are docked on the left. OK is docked on the right. And if I resize this window, if I make it wider, the OK button stays to the right. These buttons stay to the left. And if I make the window taller, all of these controls stay where they are. Because the name and email text boxes are docked to the top. And the previous, next, and OK buttons are in stack panels. And their vertical alignment is set to top. So they basically stay at the top of the stack panel, which isn't moving because the controls on top of it aren't moving. So all I get is white space at the bottom. Let's look at another example. And in this example, I have delete, save, and OK buttons. And I want those to always be at the bottom. So again, I'm using a dock panel. And I've set last child fill equal to false, because I don't want the last element in there to resize itself. I have a list box, which displays customers. And that's docked on the left. And because it's the first element listed in the dock panel, it's going to take up the entire left-hand side. My text boxes and text blocks are in a stack panel, and that's docked on the top. And it gets all of the top that's not taken up by the list box, so it's going to fill up the remaining window between the list box and the right-hand side, and will always stay docked to the top. And then I have a stack panel, which contains my buttons, and it's docked on the bottom. And now when I run this, this is the second nesting example. Notice we start out with the list box on the left, text boxes on the top, buttons on the right, and the bottom. And as I make this window taller or shorter, those buttons will always stay docked on the bottom. And if I make the window wider, they again stay docked on the bottom right. The list box stays the same width. The text boxes will fill out to take up the rest of the screen. So by nesting containers, I have much more control over how things lay out. And with not a huge amount of XAML, I get windows that are the data entry forms I want.